All right, hello again, everybody. Scott here. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody for uh, having a huge response to the time lapses in Lightroom video. Um, I never expected something uh, like that to take off as much as it has, so thank you, everybody who's seen that video. If you haven't, go click on it and watch it. Um, I think it's a, it's a good representation of what you can do in Lightroom, even though Lightroom was not designed um, to do that specific task. But there are some limitations and I wanted to make this video to show you that there's an even easier and more um, robust way to make your time lapses. So first, a little backstory. Um, when we when we go to Lightroom and we have you know basically what I've done is I've taken you know a bunch of images and put them in a collection here for time lapses. So um, I have a little nested collection here of time lapses: one for Badwater, one for the plane. This is the time lapse that I used um, uh, in the Lightroom video. It's a thousand photos. <clears throat> um, so uh, the way that we're doing this in Lightroom is not technically not the correct way to make a time lapse. It's a hack that we're using to basically make Lightroom do what it wasn't designed to do. So I'm gonna click on slideshow here, and if you haven't seen the Lightroom video, I suggest you watch that because it shows basically what all these mean and how to use them. Um, but I didn't explain in that video exactly what's going on, so that's why I'm making this video, to show you that there's an even easier way. Um, basically, these templates are text files that we've hacked uh, Lightroom to do what it was not designed to do. So we are asking Lightroom to adjust the speed of each one of these photos um, because the, the minimum time on screen that you can do, if we just do widescreen here, um, the absolute minimum time available in Lightroom is one second. So each one of these images stays on screen for one second. But these templates have been basically hacked to allow these photos to show up on screen for much less time. The problem with doing this is that there's no direct way to get Lightroom to actually export a video to these individual time-lapse frames per second. Um, so what I mean by that is, is that it may, the, the template may say 23.97 frames per second, but that's not, when you export the video, the video is not 23.97 frames per second. It's a 30 FPS video, 30 FPS. So there is no way to get Lightroom to actually export a time lapse in this time frames, in these time frames here. It must do 30 FPS. There's no way around that. <clears throat> So basically what these templates are doing is it's allowing each image to be on screen and appear to be on screen at 23 or 24, 25 frames per second, but within a 30 FPS video, if that makes sense. Hopefully that does make sense. Um, the other thing that Lightroom can't do is it can't fractionalize seconds. So if you have a time lapse that's going for 23, seconds, and then there's a little bit of extra images on the end, so maybe the entire frame would be like, let's say, 23 and a half seconds of time, of, of full time lapse. Um, that half second on the end just gets lobbed off. Like, you can't use it. If you have one frame at the end, so it would be like 24 seconds point one, it, that one point one gets lobbed off. It, Lightroom can only export in whole seconds whole seconds. So you can only get a 20 second video or a 30 second video or a 40 second video. It cannot do like 20 and a half or 20 and a third. Um, so that fairly, it's fairly limiting. Also the fact that you can't actually export the video in anything other than 30 FPS is limiting as well. Also, <clears throat> um, I thought it was fun to kind of hack these templates, make my own, and, and have them up there for you guys to upload, because you can work with the raw files. Um, you don't necessarily have to have JPEGs. Like, these are all raw files. These this photos from Badwater Basin are all raw. Um, and so you don't have to actually export anything and make it a JPEG. So that is where Photoshop is going to come in. So to do this, 
the, an even, I think, easier way is to, is to use Photoshop to do this for us. It, it's only like two steps. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go to the ice and plane. These were all taken in, actually, you know what? Let's do this. Let's go to Badwater Basin. Here's all the photos from Badwater. They're all shot in raw, as you can see here. Let's make this a little bigger. They're all shot in raw. Now, typically what I would do is I would uh, Command A to select all of these, and then I would you know maybe go to the develop module Make sure auto sync is turned on, so we'll turn that on, and we'll just you know lower the highlights, maybe increase the exposure and the shadows, um, maybe come down to effects and or sorry, whoops, that's different now. If you've updated Lightroom to the most recent version, your dehaze has moved from the effects panel up to the basic panel, so we'll give this a little dehaze as well. And then instead of 7,000, let's make this 8,500. <laughs> mm, that's too much. No, that's fine. We'll increase the tint to 10. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe we'll lower this a little bit to 8,000. And then make this 15. Yeah, that's better. Give it a little clarity. And then maybe up the, no, we'll leave the saturation the same. Okay, so now all of these images are synchronized. Um, they all have the same uh, processing. Um, if we go down towards the end here, let's kind of move this along. Actually, let's go back to the grid because it's struggling a little bit. We'll go all the way down here and just make sure that these guys look, okay, so they look pretty good. So now <clears throat> that we've processed all of these images, actually there's one more thing we gotta do. Let's go back to develop. And we wanna turn on lens corrections for these guys. And have it sync real quick. We'll give it a second. So there's quite a lot of photos, which is why it's taking a long time. Um, <clears throat> more modern processors will be able to crunch through that a little faster. Okay, let's go back to the grid. And we have all the images ready. Um, okay, so typically from this point, what you would do is you would go to slideshow, and then you would click on the appropriate template that you wanted, like uh, let's say 30 or 29, actually 30 no longer works very well, so we're gonna delete that one, 29.97, um, and then we would hit export video, and then we would name the video and have it do its thing. Um, so that's, I mean, it's fairly simple, works pretty well. Um, however, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have Photoshop do this for us, so we have more choices, okay? So we're gonna open up Photoshop, and we're gonna go to File, Open, and now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna click here, Aperture Academy, we wanna go to Death Valley, and I think it was this one, yeah. And we're gonna click on this folder because that's where all of the bad water stuff is. Now, I know that none of these are gonna get processed because um, I haven't exported them yet, but I just wanted to show you this. So if you're gonna shoot your time lapse in raw, um, we cannot have Photoshop open the raw images. They need to be JPEG. So you need to process them first like I just did and then export them as JPEG so that we can import them to Photoshop because all the raw images here I can't do anything with. I can open up one at a time, but this little section right here you may have never noticed existed. It says image sequence. So let me show you if you've already exported to JPEG what to do. I'm gonna hit cancel, go to file, open again, and then this time we're gonna go over to this Iceland uh, time-lapse folder. We're gonna click on the first image here and then I'm gonna click image sequence here and then hit open. Now I can actually choose what I want in terms of the frame rate. So I can do 29.97, we'll just do that one. <laughs> uh, it has gaps, that's fine. And then boom, look at that, so fast, it's done. There's our time lapse. I can hit play and I can have it roll through. Um, And there we go, it's completely finished. You can also kind of edit this if you want as well. So where my hand is at the beginning, let's kind of scrub back. Where did that start? Kind of goes a little slowly and then one of these frames, there's like my hand right here. We can actually zoom in a little bit over here. Um, let's zoom in 
and we'll go back. Where's my hand? Oop, right there. So we'll go one frame past that, and then we'll click and drag that over. All right, so now when I hit play now, we basically have exactly the time lapse we want. And we'll make this a little smaller. We'll just kind of scrub through here to make sure that we have everything we need. That's fine. Let's go a little further. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right. Now to get this out of here, we can hit File, Export, Render video. We're not going to do that though because the image isn't really done. Um, you'll notice that the the format for this, the the ratio is still in a three by or two by three ratio, which is not standard television. Um, now everything is in sixteen by nine. So what we can do is we can actually crop the whole thing right here. If I grab the crop tool and just pick nineteen twenty by ten eighty or sixteen by nine right here. Um, then I can move this around and I'll put it there and then hit enter or done. And now the whole thing is cropped to a 16 by 9 ratio, which is exactly what I want. Now I'm going to hit export. So file, <clears throat> uh, export, render video. And the preset is uh, YouTube HD. You can obviously change that to whatever you want. Um, We'll keep everything the same. Well, everything looks good. And then we will yeah, put it on the desktop, that's fine. Then we'll hit render. And this will take a little bit of time. All right, and then the video is done. We'll just close this and not save it. And then we'll bring this over here. Whoops, didn't want to do that. No. <laughs> Let's open up VLC. And boom, there is our video, our time lapse in 29.97 frames per second. So that's how you do it just from JPEGs. <clears throat> um, for the raw files like we have here, you gotta export these first. So I have them all selected, they're already all edited. We'll hit export and we will put them in a subfolder just called DVTL, Death Valley Time Lapse. We don't need to rename them. We want to make them JPEGs. Um, and so we'll just, uh, long edge, let's do 2,000. No, 2,000 pixels on the long edge. That should be enough. 1920 by 1280. Yeah. Uh, so 2,000, that's fine. Then we'll hit export and have it export these 300 files. Okay, <clears throat> so now that they're exported um, and outside of Lightroom in a JPEG format, we can go back to Photoshop, File, Open, and then I put them on the desktop, DVTL, click the first image, click Image Sequence, and then click Open. And then, uh, well, this is a standard 29.97 <clears throat> for YouTube or most, you know, videos is uh, 29.97. A more filmic look, like, you know, is 24. Um, but standard is 27 or 29.97. We'll hit OK. And then, boom, it's done. It's that fast. It doesn't take very long at all for it to do this. Um, so now I had the crop tool that was already set from the last one. We'll just put this here to make the crop kind of right there. Look at my rule of thirds. We'll hit OK. And then we'll scrub through this. And that looks pretty good. And then again, we'll hit File, Export, Render Video. And we'll change the document size here to 1920 by 1080 and everything looks good 29.97 yep export or render and then have photoshop render it okay and then let's click this guy and open him up over here so you guys can see him and then hit play and there we go there's another 29.97 
time lapse. Now, the problem with this that you may see is that it's completely unstable. Um, it was taken on a tripod, but man, it was so windy when we were out here doing this that I had no, this is, this is basically what I got. Um, the unfortunate side of this is that there's nothing you can do about this unless you have Premiere, uh, Adobe Premiere CC or an older version of it. I think CS6, um, standalone older version CS6 has access to something called Warp Stabilizer, which you can use to stabilize the footage. Uh, Photoshop, however, does not have that option. There may be a way around it if you went to Lightroom and you know said edit in, opened this all up as layers in Photoshop, and then when they were all opened up as layers, you could go up to um, edit and do auto align to auto align all the layers. Um, that did not work on my computer. My uh, Photoshop hung up because there were so many layers there. I tried it in raw. I tried it with um, very small JPEGs. Um, neither one worked. It just sort of hung up. Um, There's just too much going on there. Um, but uh, yeah, so the only way to get the footage stabilized is to use something like Premiere um, to do warp stabilizer or if there's another third-party version out there. Um, case in point, just make sure that your camera is stable before you uh, start your time-lapse. So your time-lapse looks something um, like this, which the camera did not move at all, um, rather than something like this, where it was moving because it was so windy. Uh, anyway, so then you can close this, don't save, you have your time lapse, wherever you exported it to, you're ready to go, you're done. You can start uh, messing with it. Um, so again, easiest way to do it, subdivide all of your time lapse frames into uh, a collection of some kind, um, select them all, export, them out of Lightroom as a JPEG. Um, you could do a full size JPEG if you want. You can just say don't resize, you know, just do a full size JPEG, export it out. And then again, when you go to Photoshop, file, open, make sure they're JPEGs and not RAWs, click the first image, and then click image sequence, and then hit open. And then you can choose your frame rate, done. Now, the one step that I added was cropping it you know, to a 16 by nine format, but you could leave that off if you don't wanna do that. Um, and then export, render video, and you're finished, that's it. So simple. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, if you liked it, please click the subscribe button. Um, click the notification bell to know when new videos are coming out. Um, again, thanks to everyone who had such a huge response from the uh, Lightroom time-lapse video. Um, and uh, happy shooting, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.